Good afternoon, I'm forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams. A breezy and cold afternoon. There's even some snow up in the thumb, but we're going to be warming up quite a bit over the next several days. I'll have your forecast coming up. We also have breaking news. First at four, Oakland County Sheriff's just revealed new information on a sexual assault case dating back to 1999. What we just learned minutes ago, and Will Jones is live. A professional baseball player is off the mound on a soapbox over his wife's experience flying with kids. Air travelers are unpacking this. That's all next at four. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, breaking news from the Oakland County Sheriff in a sex assault case. This was from 24 years ago. A news conference continues at this hour. Here's what we know so far. 51-year-old Kurt Allen Relima of West Bloomfield Township is charged with sexual assault. The attack took place at the Twin Lakes Golf Club back in 1999 in Oakland Township. Now, the defendant was also linked by DNA to a sexual assault in 2000 at a golf course on the campus of Penn State University. Sheriff Mike Bouchard says that DNA match and current technology helped police in both states to find the suspect. We intend to use this kind of tool to bring closure um, or at least attempt to bring closure to the victims of violent crimes. We know that they can never forget that violent crime that was perpetrated against them, and we will never forget the opportunity to help them take a step forward by identifying the perpetrator and bringing them to the bar of justice. The suspect is being held without bond. Our reporter Sean Lay is at the news conference with the sheriff. He'll have a live update with more information on Local 4 News at 6. In other news this afternoon, Michigan Supreme Court Justice Richard Bernstein has announced he is seeking treatment for a mental health issue. The court issued a brief statement from Bernstein saying he's seeking treatment outside of Michigan. He also says he'll be working remotely on some cases where possible. And the justice is also encouraging others to get help if they ever need to do so. He's not sharing details on what prompted his decision. There's a bipartisan push in Lansing to start allowing alcohol sales at college sports venues in Michigan. A Republican from near Lansing and a Democrat from Kalamazoo are leading this effort. The bills in the state House and Senate would allow universities to apply for liquor licenses to sell alcohol at basketball, football and hockey games. Supporters say eight of the 14 schools in the Big Ten allow alcohol sales and most have actually seen a drop in alcohol-related incidents at the games. A similar effort at Lansing last year didn't get brought up for a vote. We'll keep you posted. City of Highland Park waiting to hear from Governor Gretchen Whitmer on its request to declare bankruptcy. Last night at 11, we showed you how the city council voted 3-2 to two in favor of declaring Chapter 9, but they need approval of the governor who has urged the city to work on a deal to pay a $19 million bill to the Great Lakes Water Authority. Property taxes could triple if the city had to pay that bill all at once. The city and the Water Authority are expected in court on Thursday. In your first forecast, how many of you actually had to switch from your air conditioning back to turning the heat on? Meteorologist Kim Adams tells us what's in store for tonight. Hey, Kim. Hey, well, we've already covered my air conditioning's on 365, and we all know why. We got partly cloudy skies. Temperatures are in the 40s. It is a breezy and cold afternoon here in Metro Detroit. 45 in Howell, 43 in Pontiac. Winds out of the west at 20 miles per hour. A little gusty at times. Temperatures across the board in the mid to upper 40s, well below our normal high, which is now 60. But it's warmer than it was yesterday, at least, so we're trending in the right direction. It's 9 degrees warmer at Metro Monroe and also in Ann Arbor. For the day tomorrow, we'll get some sunshine back and highs will be closer to normal anyway in the upper 50s. But the temperature trend over the next several days is that roller coaster ride up into the close to almost 80 degrees by Thursday, but then well below normal for the weekend. I'll have your future forecast in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Kim. We are getting our first look at an American journalist being detained in Russia since his arrest on espionage charges. Even Gersovkovich was brought to court in Moscow today. Now, while he didn't get what he was hoping for, he was able to meet with the U.S. ambassador to Russia. Devin Skillian joins us now to talk about the very latest in that court appearance. Devin. 
Yeah, Karen, uh, the Biden administration is pushing for the release of the Wall Street Journal reporter, but so far Russia just not budging at all. Today, his attorneys and the Wall Street Journal offered to pay bail worth more than 600,000 U.S. dollars. Gershkovich stood in a glass cage during his court appearance, as is often the case in Russia. You may remember similar images of NBA star Brittany Griner when she was being held there. And the photojournalist and his attorneys asked the judge if he could be granted bond and house arrest instead of being kept in one of Russia's most notorious prisons. That appeal, though, was rejected. Gershkovich's arrest marks the first attention of an American reporter in Russia on allegations of spying since the Cold War era. The U.S. ambassador and his Russian attorney talked about what the reporter has been going through. He, he read a lot of books, and maybe he, he uh, told us he, that he, maybe he will write uh, some some uh, good uh, novel at the about end of the himself. story about himself. <laughs> I can report that he is in good health and remains strong despite his circumstances. The charges against Evan are baseless, and we call on the Russian Federation to immediately release him. Now, Russia's main security service claims Gershkovich was caught trying to obtain state secrets. Wall Street Journal categorically rejects uh, this accusation, of course. So what happens next? Long way, <laughs> always, right? always a question in Russia, right? But the Biden administration says they're going to keep working behind the scenes. But in the meantime, Gershkovich is going to be held in prison, and we know now until at least May 29th. That'll be his next court date. Faces up to 20 years, though, on those espionage charges all of this, of course, for us sounds very familiar because of the Paul Wheeling yeah. case, also charged with espionage. All right. Thank you, Devin. Yep. Well, now an update on the case of a black teenager shot. His family says after ringing the doorbell at the wrong house, 84-year-old Andrew Lester is now facing two felony charges and could spend the rest of his life behind bars. Lester tells police in Kansas City, Missouri, he lives alone, heard the doorbell, saw a black male pulling on the storm door and thought someone was breaking in. 16-year-old Ralph Yarl was shot in the head and arm. He's now recovering at home but says he was just trying to pick up his little brothers and got the address mixed up. Late today, Lester turned himself into authorities. Meantime, incredibly, there's a similar story out of New York where 65-year-old Kevin Monahan is facing second-degree murder charges. Police say he shot and killed a woman who accidentally turned into his driveway. It happened in a rural town in upstate New York on Saturday. Investigators say Kaylin Gillis and three other people were driving around looking for a friend's house. Sheriff's deputies say Monahan fired two shots from his front porch and one bullet killed the 20-year-old woman. He is in custody at this hour waiting to make a court appearance. Thousands of passengers on Southwest Airlines have been forced to deal with some delays after a brief ground stop. The airline says a tech issue briefly caused some problems with its operational data. Southwest delayed more than 1,800 flights for 43 percent of its schedule. Only nine were canceled. Southwest posted an apology on social media for any inconvenience. Frequent flyers and parents and social media commentators, oh, they are debating something you might call the popcorn pickup backlash. This photo of spilled popcorn on a United flight has gone viral thanks to tweets from the kid's father, Toronto Blue Jay Anthony Bass, who happened to go to Wayne State. So the question here, who should have picked up the popcorn? Well, we've got the results of a WDIV insider poll. But first, Will Jones dives into the debate. Oh, we're talking about it in the newsroom. Really, everyone's talking about this, Will. Hey, Karen, who doesn't like a good debate? On Twitter, it seems like a lot of people, though, are siding with the flight crew. But those we talked to here today at Metro Airport say the flight attendant was in the wrong. We even posed this question to an etiquette coach. Flying solo can be stressful at times. Add kids into the mix can make it even more challenging to navigate. Just ask Colleen Tillery, who is traveling with her 10-month-old back home to California. And I have my retired mom here who's in a wheelchair, so I'm pretty much stuck with trying to get her around and the baby, and people just, they don't care. <laughs> That's why tweets by Toronto Blue Jay pitcher and Dearborn native Anthony Bass is striking a nerve with air travelers, especially those who are moms. Bass claims a United Airlines flight attendant made his 22-week pregnant wife traveling with a five-year-old and two-year-old get on her hands and knees to pick up popcorn spilled by his youngest daughter. I probably would have been like, can you see that my hands are full? I would really appreciate if you could help me. That's very embarrassing. Sadia Utter has flown along with three kids before and sympathizes with Bass's wife. I don't like it if the flight attendant should be helping. 
But Bass has received some pushback on social media, some asking who should be responsible for cleaning up the mess in which Bass responds, the cleaning crew they hire. One of the foundations of etiquette would be having grace for people who are going through difficult situations and struggling. Not only as an etiquette coach, but also as a mother of four, Danielle Kavakovich believes the flight attendant should have offered a helping hand. If you are a passenger or the flight attendant, the kind, um, you know, sort of mannerly thing to do would have been to help her. I wish people had more observance to see that, you know, these moms are doing the best they can, especially she had two kids and she was pregnant. I want to thank all those moms who talked to me today. I felt kind of bad bothering them since they had their hands full, but they were so nice and took some time to talk with us. We did reach out to United, but we haven't heard back yet. But Bass did tweet out that United is taking care of this matter internally. Live at Metro Airport, Will Jones, Local 4. So many opinions out there, and I love that you recognize how busy those moms were traveling with the kids. Good job, Will. <laughs> It's hard for sure. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, here are the responses from our WDIV Insiders poll. Just 9% side with the baseball player when he said the crew should clean up the mess. The majority, 59% say parents should clean up after their own kids. But 32% say it would have been nice for the crew to help, but they don't necessarily blame them. We've got breaking news on that closely watched battle between Fox News and Dominion voting systems. NBC News is reporting lawyers for both sides reached a last minute settlement before opening statements could begin. The voting machine company says Fox News spread false claims about fraud in the 2020 election. Dominion was sinking $1.6 billion. Now we do not know yet what is in that settlement. We'll keep following this and we'll have an update for you on the news at 5.